Recently, I had the unique opportunity to sit down and speak with Dr. Krishna Bhatta. Dr. Bhatta is a surgeon, an inventor, an author, and so much more. But what we talked about with Dr. Bhatta was a personal side of Dr. Bhatta, his willingness to sit down and teach us all about what he's learned about the inner silence and developing skills to calm yourself under any situation. It was a pleasure to talk with Dr. Bata. Let's not waste any more time and get into this great interview. Hello, good evening, good morning, good afternoon, wherever you may be around this wild, wacky, and sometimes disturbing world of ours. Yes, that's the intro to the Mindset Podcast, a weekly attempt to open eyes and shedding light on what's really going on in the world, all done by ripping apart the media madness that masquerades as news. Join me, Gareth Davis, every Sunday on the Mindset Podcast. You can find the show on all major podcasting services such as iTunes, Stitcher, and so on. Or you can go directly to the main Mindset website. That's www.mindsetcentral.com. Check out the Mindset Podcast. Bring your curiosity, your opinions, and a sense of humor. And remember that some worldviews are stranger than others. To overcome, you must educate. Educate not only yourself, but educate anyone seeking to learn. We are all dead America. We can all learn something. To learn, we must challenge what we already understand. The way we do that is through conversation. Sometimes we have conversations with others. However, some of the best conversations happen with ourselves. Reach out and challenge yourself. Let's dive in and learn something right now. Today we have Dr. Krishna Bhatta with us. He is a surgeon, an author, and an inventor. Fabulous person to talk with. Let's get right into it. Dr. Bhatta, could you please introduce yourself and let our audience know what you do and how you became who you are today? Ed, thanks for having me on your show. And it's a great pleasure to be. It's the beginning of the new year. So a belated happy new year to you and to your audience. I am a urologist by profession. I have had a career in medicine and also parallel meditation, which is not a career, but uh, for my personal growth. And now I'm willing to share and I have started sharing with people my experience and my growth in that area. Looking into you, you have had a fascinating life and you've experienced so much. What we're going to talk a little bit about today is finding yourself through intermittent silence, the power of inner theater, also, some power of inner conversation, which I really love. Could we start with intermittent silence and let our audience know what exactly is intermittent silence? Ed, let's start with uh, two questions for the new year. One is, who controls what you do? And uh, the second one is, do you stand... That's good to hear. Many people, many of us just do things, but we don't know who is in control. Sometimes it's our belief system. Sometimes it's our customs that we grow to. And sometimes it's just social norms that dictate what we do. So 
getting the control in your hands is more important for whatever you do. Even if it is a glass of water or a cup of coffee, you are not doing it just because you have done every day. You do it because you actively want that coffee and it's in your control, you can say no to. And the second one is spending time with yourself. Most of us spend time with other people or with our digital world and not give our brain a rest or be with ourselves. And that is where intermittent silence practice comes in on a regular basis. People have practiced silence. Ed, they have gone for retreats for 10 day silence or 10 day meditation retreats. But bringing it into daily life is what intermittent silence, a 10 minute practice of silence does to you. And it has some wonderful effects, you know, as we were going to explore some of them. The ability to just be quiet and set and absorb the surrounding. It's a remarkable experience, and I really highly recommend people do it often. Absorb nature around you, the sounds, the sights, the smells. And to do it properly, you really have to know how to observe silence. It's not easy to do, especially in this world that we live in today. Quieting the mind enough to experience this silence do you have tricks for people to get to that place uh, yes so this uh, practice of intermittent silence i have structured it in a way that it makes it easier to do because there is a pathway to this it is as you said uncomfortable to be silent even for 10 minutes. It's much easier to do guided meditation for two hours compared to being just quiet, and silent for 10 minutes. The steps are, there are four steps to intermittent silence. One is close your mouth. When you close your mouth, you are closing everything about the speech, processing of thoughts and the brain cells that are active doing that expression and communication part, they're all rested for those 10 minutes. The second part is to close your eyes. When you close your eyes, all the neurons and neural pathway with vision or visual stimulus or processing, they're rested, but also the power of observation Eyes are also observing outside when you have open eyes. Now you can turn it inwards. The third one is silent listening. As you mentioned, you listen to all the sounds around you. And the fourth one is silently watching your thoughts. Just let it pass through. The thoughts are, some people try to focus it or some people try to uh, bring it to a point where the thoughts disappear, but those things are not going to happen. One way to express is, I can tell a story, it's a kind of a made up story, and think of, you know, Professor Tom Tinker. And he decides one, one day to explore what watching of thoughts is like, because everyone says it's like watching the tra traffic go by. So he decides to go and stand in the middle of Mass Pike in Boston in highway and just wants to watch the traffic from within the traffic. And it, it sounds like he's doing something dumb, but that's what many people do when they do meditation or the, when they meditate with thoughts. They try to stop the thoughts. It's like a stopping an 18 wheeler on the highway. That's not what you can do or you are supposed to do, either with the 18-wheeler or with your thoughts. You have to stand on the side and then watch it go by because the traffic is not going to stop and the same way the minding is not going to stop. 
in the process, when you get to a point where you are watching your thoughts and listening silently to the sound of the nature and observing inside and not processing any thoughts or you know what you're going to say, new doors open and actually energy waves start happening. And that's why we say ride the wave of energy inside. It's not an empty space. It's a space full of energy that you actually, once it starts rising, you start feeling this energy. It's like goosebumps when you feel something or when you are in love, you feel something that happens that you can never explain. And that's where you want to be and not try to stop the thought or quiet the thought or you know, make the thoughts go away because that's not going to happen. With this silence, I notice meditation comes in many forms and a lot of people add music to meditation. Do you see that as a good thing or a bad thing? No, I mean, there's nothing bad. <clears throat> so the, even in the practice of silence, you cannot do anything wrong. Even if your thoughts take you away, hijack you, once you realize, you can start watching again. So there is nothing you can do wrong in these 10 minutes of intermittent silence. Now, coming to meditation, meditation is such a huge world. And you, you know, if you start looking, there are thousands of meditations, and everybody has some guided meditations and music meditations. So, varieties of meditation and there is nothing wrong with music and guided meditation. So here is the thing. All meditations, they have these four components that I said, intermittent silence as a part of that. So you, co you combine music, it becomes a music meditation. You combine breathing, it becomes a breathing meditation. But in all of them, you have to watch your thoughts and you have to watch your you know, silent si sounds. So those two things are common. Most people will prefer to close the eyes. Some people will say half close the eyes and you are always cl closing your mouth. So what I have done is that I have taken kind of an essence out of meditation and a basic package, which is a complete package in itself as intermittent silence, which you can combine with any meditation. Let's carry on with this meditation a little bit further. What is the base reason behind people meditating? Why would people want to meditate in the first place? I think that's a very good question. And I do want to uh, make my point here again. Most of the meditation that has been talked about, at least in the West, you are told that you do it to become peaceful, you do it to reduce anxiety, you do it to reduce your uh, blood pressure or diabetes. And that's not the real purpose for meditation. If I have hypertension or blood pressure, I can easily take a pill rather than do meditation one hour a day for so many years to get there and may not get there. Those are byproducts of meditation or side effects, which are good, but those should not be the primary reason for meditation. I think meditation should be exploring the inner universe that you have. So in some ways, let me say that you, when you do intermittent silence and you have practiced it, you are going to the source which I use a word called flame of consciousness or your individual consciousness, which is basically pure energy in some sorts. So you go to the source, you find the force, you feel the force, use the force to create inner conversation or inner theater, and you bring that force with you. So it's like a Star Wars, let the force be with you, and it actually happens when you do, at least for two or three months, any of the meditation, 
or just the practice of intermittent silence will do that as well. And then you can feel that energy that can stay with you and use that inner universe for other purposes. So the beginning is just going inside and being quiet for 10 minutes. But then you can start, as you mentioned in the beginning of your program, the inner theater and your inner conversation, then it becomes productive. So it's not just an, an empty place you are going to, but you are coming with some positive energy. And one of the things uh, it is the higher the energy you have, the more peaceful you become. The lower the energy, more mm. irritable you are. Yeah, I, I've I've actually experienced that. So I recognize what you're saying there. So tell us about the power of inner theater. What is that? So the power of inner theater, after you have done this intermittent silence or you have to practice this silence for a few months on a regular basis, and my recommendation, and it's not just my recommendation, recommendation of most spiritual people is if you do same time, same place, same technique, you have compounded effects. So you have done that. Now you have been used to creating or knowing your inner universe. Now you go there and create a scenario. Suppose you have a presentation coming up. So you can say, okay, you can create a whole inner theater where you have that hall, you have this stage, you have the microphone, it's your space, you control that space. So you can create the positivity the, the one that you want. And you can do the, rehearse the whole speech there before you go and act it out in the real world. And this inner theater can be used for practicing anything of this sort, whether it is a surgery or it's a, um, there is a book on power, positive imaging by Reverend Vincent Peel. And he explores that positive, positive imaging part quite a bit, not in the same fashion I'm describing, but basically you can image everything, not just positive thinking, but create images, powerful images inside you. Like, you know, you have powerful dreams sometimes, but this can be a controlled atmosphere that you get yourself. And that's uh, the inner theater you can make and create and work on. Yeah, that's a powerful tool to have. Touching on spirituality and the the power that we create through our intention or our attitude. This is heavy when we confront ourselves in life. You, you just said the level of intensity gives that emotion and power. There are forces here that a lot of us don't really understand, but it's like they feed off of us and we kind of feed off of them. Can you help explain that a little bit? There is a, basically you mentioned the power of intention and the way we practice power of intention or most people do is we use our mind to do that, whether it is power of intention or power of compassion or all those words that we use or, or resilience. What I am saying is that make it come out of your inner universe. And one way to do that is to have that inner theater where you can interact and bring these things out from there. So you are bringing from your inside. You're not just doing it from your mind, which is outside. Do you get the difference? Yes. So having those inner so, conversations, that's very important when we actually have to challenge what we already believe, what we already know, 
and try to understand truth and make logic out of that. I love having conversations with myself, uh, probably more than I like having conversations with others because it helps me prime myself to have the conversation with others. And that's that inner theater part of it. So the inner conversation, Ed, one is what you said, you can talk to yourself, but the inner conversation is uh, the way I see it here is uh, that inner universe that you go to when you are practicing intermittent silence is the source for all creativity, is the source for all ideas, source of all uh, music, because if you talk to invent people who invent people who you know think of some things that they write they will say it came to me where did it come from and uh, i always quote this uh, jack canfield who wrote that chicken soup for the soul and he says what how he got the title he closed his eyes and let things come to him and then you know out came this the whole idea of the title but that's what I'm talking about. There are two kinds of inner conversation that become powerful. One is once you go there, let things come, let the solutions come to you. If you have an issue, sleep on it, practice, go, go in your inner universe through intermittent silence, and then let things come to you. And they do start coming to you. Ideas start coming, answers start coming. And, uh, that is one part of inner conversation. The other part is, if you have something that you want to brainstorm, where else is the best place in other than quiet place, your inner universe? You go there and just let it float. And, you know, you are used to watching your thoughts. Now you can take that one thought and just process there. And it's a, it's a wonderfully full place to do it. The only thing is you can only know and confirm it by doing it yourself. Okay, how, how often should we practice this silence in our life? It's 10 minutes a day. That's what uh, hmm. I propose. And uh, there is a app that I created, Relax with 2X. And that has a timer, you know, it gives you some instructions for a minute. Then there is a timer, 10 minute silence, and there is a music at the end. It's so funny because I was saying I in Maine, I go to the coast or I go hiking and I, I will lie down on the rock and you know just close my eyes and put the app on. And 10 minutes later, I get up and it, it's, it's wonderful. And uh, somebody I was talking to from the West Coast area and they said, well, you can do that in Maine, but here there is mountain lions or um, <laughs> rattlesnakes. I don't know how. <laughs> so so yeah. you have to find your safety. <laughs> the safety is important too. Yes. Yeah. Let's talk a little bit about the Relax app. Uh, what did you make this for? There is a quite a number of meditation apps out there. And most of them work on your body and mind. This app has got a third component, so body, mind, and the flame. And the flame is your inner consciousness or that inner universe I'm talking about. Body and mind, it's good to pay attention and, and the West and, and the whole world now pays a lot of attention to that. We know how to stay healthy, we know how to stay safe. We exercise and uh, we, many of us control our diet uh, or, or you know, have a balanced diet. So we are health conscious and we are also mind conscious. We go to universities, we do excellent uh, work and medicine has expanded, engineering has expanded, we go to space. So we have explored a lot in these two fields. The flame, either we don't know or we don't pay attention to. And uh, we are born with uh, different levels of body, different levels of mind, and different levels of flame. 
we work to progress from wherever we are in the body and the mind. But as I said, the flame is something that is left on the side. My proposal or this app works on all the three elements or all the three components and helps growth of all of them. You may have heard many people, you know, excellent doctors, excellent engineers, excellent businessmen, but they suffer from depression or they burn out. And why do they do that while others don't? There are some people who never even talk about burnout, you know, they're they are born with different size or different level of the flame, where if you have enough energy level, then you, as, I, as we talked earlier, you feel more peaceful. So your chances of burnout is low. But people who have not had that uh, fortune of getting the flame level or born with that flame level, they can work on their flame through intermediate silence, meditation, and raise the level so that they can be less prone to those uh, events or unfortunate things. This uh, app, that's one com unique in the uh, identifier that we have. And then of course, there is a lot of deep meditations in this program, apart from intermittent silence, like meditation on chakras and talks about conserving energy, creating energy, sharing energy because energy is a big part of our life. Um, it's not just the physical body, but there is an energy body also we have that we should work on. So all these things, all these components are part of that app, uh, which I think will be very helpful for people. Okay, where, where do we find that app? And what does it cost people to download the app? At the moment, there is no cost because it's a fairly new app and we want people's feedback and see how they experience it. It is, I have a website, relaxwith2x.org, R-E-L-A-X-X dot O-R-G. And uh, there is a download link for iPhone and Android. Or they can search in uh, App Store or Google Play Store but relax with two X and uh, um, they should be able okay. to find it. All right. Now also you wrote a book. It's called journey from life to life, achieving higher purpose. Let's touch on that. What, what is the book about and why did you write the book? Yes. I mean, the book is, what it says, it's journey from this life to another life, if you think there is another life. So it touches on how to be successful in this life because it is important to be a successful person to be able to have a successful after death experience or after death journey. And I found that uh, most of us pay tremendous detail for planning little things like a holiday or vacation or a interview. We go to minute details to do that. When it comes to what happens after death, we all either close our eyes or bury our head in the sand. In a way, we say, okay, we believe this, what, this is what happens or God will take care of it. We don't say God will take care of my vacation to Caribbean, but we do for one of the most important parts of our life, we leave it to chance, God, or belief system. This book tries to excite people or try to get people to start thinking that, no, you can do something about it and you should do something about it. So that's the part of a journey from life to life. Achieving higher purpose okay. is something we should always strive for, but this is the perfect opportunity. This world has given us a perfect opportunity. Think of the world that when England and France were always fighting and India or 
was into multiple states and they were all always, you know, running around trying to kill each other. We are a different world now. It's more peaceful, more prosperous. Now people can think about higher purpose. We all have a higher purpose. So I think uh, the title and subtitle is kind of uh, trying to tell people to think about something that they normally don't think about. That's, that's a good concept. We, we need to learn to do that. We limit ourselves a lot of the time and learning how not to limit ourselves, especially on our belief system, we kind of have to challenge it once in a while. Are you afraid of death? And what is the meaning of life to you? I think most of us are afraid of death and that's probably why we kind of totally turn our face away from it. Uh, we know it is inevitable. Personally, no, I'm uh, ready whenever it comes. But I think that's that's an important uh, factor that you mentioned. Fear is big. Um, people probably close their eyes to, or they don't know sometimes, you know, that something can be done about it. Like we know that we can go to university and edu get it educated. We know we can go to a gun shop and have a shooting you know, practice. Or we can go and play golf and hit the ball. But this area has been largely left untouched by science. My attempt is to bring science and scientific community to start thinking about it. And they are. They do research on meditation. There is a lot of work going on consciousness. It may be slow, but I think there is attention coming to this area. If you think some of these uh, apps that are already available, Calm or Headspace, they have millions of downloads. So it seems like there is interest. There are people thinking that probably there is something there inside. It's our job to show them that it's more than just finding some peace or some quietness or some, that you can find inner treasures. There are bigger things out there that you can explore. And once they dive into it, they will find themselves. If, you know, if, they, if you come across that energy that you can feel in your inner universe, it becomes addictive you will keep doing it because you want to be there. You want to experience that, that, that phenomenon. If people want to get in touch with you or read more about you, how can they get a hold of you and get involved with what you're doing? Well, relax app or relax.org has a contact uh, and we will be coming out with more interactive sessions uh, uh, through Relax app. So that will be a good avenue. The book is available on Amazon. I would love to, I would love to interact with people who have interest in this field, either exploring or partnering. Well, I know I'm going to pick up the book, Journey from Life to Life, Achieving Higher Purpose, because I love to learn new things. I want to say thank you for being with us today and taking the time to help our listeners grow and understand life a little bit better. Thank you, Ed. It has been wonderful to talk to you. And thanks for letting me listen, you know, letting your listeners listen to me. It's been an honor and a pleasure to have you. Thank you. Dr. Bada. Thank you for joining us today. If you found this podcast enlightening, entertaining, educational in any way, please share, like, subscribe, and join us right back here next week for another great episode of Dead America Podcast. I'm Ed Waters, your host. Enjoy your afternoon, wherever you may be.